How to become a medical SLP. So you wanna become a medical SLP? Oh, that should be so easy and straightforward, right? Wrong. Unfortunately, most graduate programs are focused on pediatric speech therapy and not the medically complex kind. It's a little more complicated than just going to grad school. But don't fret, it's not impossible. In fact, tens of thousands of SLPs have figured it out. Let's talk about my top three tips for becoming a medical SLP. Let's dive in. I'm Teresa Richard. I've been a medical speech pathologist for 15 years. I'm a board certified specialist in swallowing and swallowing disorders. I'm the founder and CEO of the MedSLP Collective and MedSLP Education. Number one, accept that graduate school most likely didn't prepare you to be a medical SLP. There are now some wonderful graduate programs that do specialize in medical speech pathology, but the majority are still very pediatric and school-based. So please don't think you're the only one if you're feeling like you didn't get much training in this area. We graduate from programs that essentially prepare us to learn to do our jobs, particularly if we go into the adult medical SLP world and specialize in areas of patient care like voice, swallowing, or AAC. The scope we are prepared for in graduate school is wide, but shallow. Same could be said for other areas of high specialization, like trachs and vents, for instance. We are poorly prepared to jump into those areas, but we are prepared to learn about them. Now, if you are still in graduate school, seek out every course, opportunity, or independent study that you can to get more knowledge in these areas. Something else that's very important to consider is to know your limitations. Do not jump into working with patients with trachs or vents or swallowing disorders without learning extensively about it. I will add, even though I didn't get much education in grad school on these topics, I had one professor that said, do not work with these patients if you have not gotten the proper training. This is one area of our field where you can actually kill someone. Nobody wants you to do that. When I was in graduate school, I had maybe three credit hours or one class related to the thing that I ended up doing the most in the real world and something that I'm board certified in now and zero education into how to do fees, which I created an entire company around. I don't say this to be daunting, but rather encourage you that anything is possible if you seek out the proper training, education and mentorship. And also a little patience goes a long way. You aren't going to learn all of this overnight. Nobody does. I think I was doing fees for a solid five years before I really truly thought I had a handle on it and I could teach others about it. And that was six years after I initially became a medical SLP. Now for my second point, find a mentor and start looking for ways to do mentored work in medical settings. I cannot stress to you enough that finding a mentor to help guide you is the best thing you can do for yourself in your career. Of course, finding someone locally in a facility that you either work in or can go shadow is most ideal, but don't be afraid to get creative. If you can't find a local mentor, having a virtual mentor can be the next best thing. You also don't have to have just one mentor. Throughout your career, you should have many. We have dozens of mentors inside the MedSLP Collective that help our members navigate some tough clinical cases. We've gotten on the phone with some members and helped them work through some sticky situations or help them realize that they are not competent enough to be working with a specific patient population and recommended some additional coursework and CEUs. I was unable to find a local mentor in the area that I was in, and I went to about three different advanced courses before I realized that I really, really needed to just watch someone. I needed to get some actual hands-on mentorship. So I went and spent an entire week with a dear friend and shadowed her. I learned so much about how to work more effectively and I learned some brand new concepts. She said she even learned from me too. Imagine that. Are you interested in becoming a medical SLP? Do you have any questions? Leave a comment below and I'd be happy to help you. Also, I'll be posting other videos just like this one that you won't wanna miss. So be sure to hit that like and subscribe button and turn on the notification bell. And for point number three, start taking high quality CEUs. Not all CEUs are created equal. You can spend a lot of time on a CEU that doesn't offer a lot of quality. How do you figure out what to take and from whom to take it from? Start by asking in groups like the SIGs, the ASHA Special Interest Groups, or in social media outlets. Crowdsourcing information like which CEU is the best is great utilization of social media. 
Don't be afraid to take more general courses versus one that are highly specific. They all serve a purpose and depends on how you want to narrow your focus. Is there an SLP whose skills you admire? Ask them where they got their training and for ideas as to how to get yours. Also for training like fees or conferences that bring in big names, accept that these will cost more. Many presenters will spend hundreds and hundreds of hours creating just one eight hour course. Cheaper is definitely not better when it comes to learning to do our jobs well. There will be plenty of free or low cost CEU opportunities out there. Just be sure that the bulk of your learning isn't mediocre. And as someone who owns two continuing education companies, I can definitely tell you that not all CEU courses are created equal. And it's essentially why I created both of my companies. The cruddy part is that really anyone can create a course for ASHA CEUs. There truly is no requirement for it. And there's no peer review process for it either. For both of our companies, the MedSLP Collective and MedSLP Ed, we ensure that the courses we offer are based on topics that medical SLPs request with presenters that have extensive knowledge, both in the research and clinical practice. And we also peer review every single one. I don't mind spending more money to bring higher quality courses to medical SLPs. I truly believe our field and our patients are worth it. For more information about foundational medical courses for SLPs, head over to medslped.com. This is where our presenters combine the latest and greatest evidence with years of clinical experience to give you high quality peer-reviewed case-based learning.